And while we were praying, I was just writing certain things down about what makes you feminine, some characteristics. I was, I, so I guess this is my note, y'all. So I did write this thing, this is doing prayer. And one of the things is that a lot of feminine women are so gentle. Look at the Pastanecas. Being feminine doesn't mean that you wear pink all the time. You know, we always associate and all that. That's not what it means. But look how gentle she is. It's like she walks on water. When I look at her, I'm like, doesn't she have any issues? Doesn't she have any problems? It's like she walks on water. Being feminine, you have empathy. A feminine woman has empathy. You know, like, well, you know, a lot of women, they have this I don't care attitude. I don't care. I don't care. But a feminine woman, a real woman has empathy. She nurtures, she calls you and say, are you okay? There's this thing about her that makes people so attractive to her. That makes people so attractive, she's vulnerable. Vulnerability has been, has been classified as a form of weakness. That if you're vulnerable to people, they're gonna hurt you, they're gonna do this and that. Yes, it's true, they will. They will hurt you. It's true, so I'm not gonna sugarcoat anything. But there's power in vulnerability. There is power. For example, Queen Esther, which we will learn about um, a couple of weeks from now. Queen Esther, she knew she wasn't supposed to go to the king. It wasn't her time to be called. But after, you know, she's a woman of God, right? She went to God. She prayed and everything. And then she went to the king beautifully. And when the king saw her, he's just like, baby, what you want? He didn't say that way, but you know, this is the effort translation. This is what he meant to say, but he was among people, so he couldn't say that. So follow my transit, uh, translation. He said, baby, what's up? And she said, could you please come? I ha I'm having a meeting. I'm having a banquet. You know, she was scared, of course, to go, but she opened herself. She made herself vulnerable that she still went to him. And when he saw her, it's this grace about her that made him to do whatever she said. That's what vulnerability does. When you are vulnerable, it allows you to have favor. Yes, you will get hurt, but it brings favor. A feminine woman is very humble. She's not loud. She's not proud. She's not wild. She's very humble. This, like I said, this is gentleness about her. This is gentleness about her. The Bible was saying, talking about a meek and a quiet spirit. This is gentleness about her. And it doesn't mean she talks like, yeah, you know, hi. No, 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 that's what I'm talking about. She talk, you know, she talks with confidence, but it's just gentleness. It's not a, a, she's not aggressive. You know the type of woman you talk to, you be like, dang, are we fighting or are we talking? You know what I'm talking about. I know you know what I'm talking about. Yes, you do know. There's a warmth about her. It makes people want to come to her. It makes people want to respond to her. It does. Now, I'm going to read something in Songs of Solomon. And I'm going to say some things. I didn't write the book. So excuse me if it offends anybody. Songs of Solomon. Let's turn to chapter four. Like I said, this I did not write any you know, like write notes, notes, this, as you can't see no PowerPoint. So today is just coming from my heart. Songs of Solomon. Let's turn to chapter four, please. I'm going to read verses one all the way to three. Songs of Solomon, chapter four. It says, you are beautiful, my darling, beautiful beyond words. Your eyes are like doves behind your veil. So let's stop here. Your eyes, do you know that people can tell what you're going through through your eyes? People can tell if you're angry through your eyes. They can tell if you're sad through your eyes. When you go to the doctor, you should check how you to check your eyes, not just for dilation, but also check like, you know, the coloring and stuff. There's something that when, when you're going through something, your body starts, you know, releasing such um, toxins and stuff like that. So your eyes can reveal a lot of stuff. Ladies, make sure that you don't allow whatever is going around you, that your body will take that energy, your body will take that anger, and you go around and people see, oh my God, mm -mm, don't wanna talk to her. I don't wanna talk to her. This is, some, this is energy you're releasing. You should be welcoming. 
your eyes can tell a lot of stuff. So guys, do look at the eyes, y'all. Solomon, he had a thousand wives, okay? So take his advice. It says, your hair falls in waves like a flock of goats winding down the slopes of Gilead. So he's talking about presentation. Ladies, your presentation matters. I don't want to see a woman and I can't tell, are you a woman or are you a man? Today we were going, my mom and I were going to uh, one of our local stores and I saw somebody, they walked like a woman, but I couldn't tell. We know those type of women. And I'm not saying that every time you go out, you should put your stilettos on, your lashes, your this, your this, you should do, no, 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 no. But even if you're wearing a baseball hat, even if you're wearing your flip-flops, there should be something about you that says this is a woman and this is a man. There should be something like that. There should be something like that. So present yourself well. And then it says in verse two, your teeth are as white as sheep, recently sworn, uh, shorn and freshly washed. Don't go around with smelly breath. No woman, actually nobody, has a natural good odor. No one has a naturally good odor. Now this is, I'm still learning myself of course, but no, naturally speaking, we don't have good odors, which is why we have deodorants, we have soap, we have this, we have that, stuff like that. Don't leave your house without a deodorant. It was one day I went to rehearsal and I was smelling something and made me conscious, like, is it me? Is it me? Oh my God. Literally, I was busy smelling myself because I don't know if you can tell, some, some people were so used to it now that it doesn't affect us, but I get so uncomfortable if I know that I smell somehow. I have a sister, I'm always telling her, do I smell funny? Do I smell this? Do I smell like that? And she will tell me what's up. And of course you, you'll cover up, but don't leave without putting something on. You know, down there, yes, that, that young lady right down there, she produces certain odors. She does. Make sure you clean her. You clean hair, you clean hair. The Bible says in verse two, your teeth are as white as sheep. This is a person that brushes their, their teeth. So the man that married a thousand wives is looking at someone's teeth. What do you think? Hello? It's trying to tell you, it's very important to brush your teeth. Don't walk around with stains all over your teeth. Don't walk around with, you know, you just ate and then you got so, uh, 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 uh. Mm -mm. Before people see you, they will smell you. I was told this a very long time ago. Before people see you, they will smell you. They will smell you. And after you're gone, your, your leftover residue will remain. I don't know if you've ever been in a place where someone comes in with such a strong perfume and they're gone and you, their odor is still there. The same thing happens. So make sure that you clean yourself. That is, that is uh, being feminine. You clean yourself. Ladies, we're not supposed to be dirty. We're not supposed to be dirty. Don't have armpit hair looking like Mmm, come on now, you're not a bush girl. You're not. And someone was telling me today, like, don't come in with your, and I'm like, and I looked at my nails, they like, don't come in with having all stuff underneath your nails and whatnot. And I was just like, oh my God, it's time for me to cut my nails. But be clean. Reverend David narrated a story. He said, this is pastor that has been married for almost 40 years. And he loves his wife, genuinely. Then he goes to Reverend David, he said, please, he said, I am begging you, I love my wife. Oh, please tell her on my behalf that I am not strong enough. Reverend David said, what are you talking about? He said, all I'm asking her is to take a shower. That's all I'm asking. Tell her I am not strong enough. There's so much temptation around. I just want her to take a shower because every time he goes around her, that's what makes him not go not go because of that smell so present yourself presentation matters it matters so much groom yourself 
And then verse three says, your lips are like scarlet ribbon. Your mouth is inviting. Are you seeing what I'm talking about? Your mouth is inviting. Look, I know we all suffer with this sometimes where your breath, be, sometimes your mouth just does its own thing. You brush it, you brush it, but it still does its own thing. But don't be so, <sighs> Lord, please help me. I should have really written, written some notes. I can tell you straight up instead of me thinking, but that's okay. A lot of us, you know, when you first started a pattern, when you first started not taking showers as much as you used to, when you first started not wearing deodorant, you didn't really... You could tell the difference. You could tell something was up. But then the more, as you keep continuing doing it, you become so immune to the smell that you don't know you smell a certain way. You don't know your mouth smells a certain way. You don't know that. But people know it. And the Bible says in Proverbs, when we first learned a couple of weeks ago, that out of her mouth comes flows wisdom. If you want me to hear your wisdom, make sure your mouth smells somehow. I don't want to hear your wisdom or the whole time all I'm just like, God, Jehovah, please help me. Please help me. Please help me. All I want to do is get up from here. Please help me. Please help me. It says, your lips are like scarlet ribbon. Your mouth is inviting. It's your mouth inviting. And this is, you know, talking about like kissing and stuff like that. But that's what I'm, that's not, don't think about that right now. What I'm saying is when you talk to people, are they covering their noses? Are they afraid to come to you face to face? A feminine woman is a clean woman. Like I said, it doesn't matter whether you're wearing a baseball hat, whether you're wearing your flip-flops, whether you have a full face makeup on, be clean. Be clean. Especially in places where we know they produce stuff. People shouldn't look in your ears and they see wax. They see all that nastiness. They see all of that. Do you, does that make sense? Good. And then Solomon goes on describing everything as and whatnot, whatnot, whatnot. But a, femi a feminine woman is also a woman who is kind. Let us turn our Bible to Proverbs 11, verse 16 to 17. Proverbs 11, 16 to 17. The NIV version, that's what we're looking at. The NIV, NIV version says, a kind hearted woman gains honor but ruthless men gain only wealth then verse 17 says those who are kind benefit themselves but the cruel bring ruin on themselves a kind-hearted woman gains honor a feminine woman is someone who's kind it's kind and when i say kind i'm not saying Every time someone comes to you, yes, 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 all you're saying is yes, yes, you will die. Your yes will kill you. What I'm saying is that out of your mouth, your words of destruction doesn't come out. Words of backbiting doesn't come out. You know, I was talking to one of my sisters over this past weekend. I was like, I'm so sorry. You know, I know I'm trying to protect you and whatnot because I was, you know, thinking of other situations. I'm like, I'm so sorry if I made you, you know, if I said anything that's, all this other stuff. Anyway, I was, I didn't, I didn't want to make her sure that I wasn't, you know, killing somebody with my words. But a kind hearted woman, what comes out of your mouth needs to lift people up. A feminine woman invites, like I said, you invite people to, you are welcoming, you are open, you are warm. When they come to you, they shouldn't be like, um, she looks nice, but then when she opens her mouth, it's a dagger that comes out. Don't be like Don't be like that. Don't be like that. Don't be like that. A feminine woman is someone that knows herself. How can you walk confidently? How can you walk, speak wisdom? How can you uplift people? How can you, how can you be the woman that we've always said we should be, the strong, the powerful, and all of that? How can you be that if you're fake? Some of us, you look feminine, but you're really not. You're really not. Be yourself. Be yourself. No pretense about you. No pretense. 
be yourself. Be sincere. Be the true you. Look, one thing about me, and I am so grateful that, you know, my friend will always say, you're such a girly girl. Before I used to take that as an insult. I'm like, what does that mean? Like, what do you mean I'm a girly girl? But now I'm just like, thank God for that compliment. But then at the same time, one thing about me is I'm not apologetic about who I am. I'm not. I'm not apologetic. You may not like it. That's your business, honey. But I'm not apologetic. Because inside, I'm like this. Outside, I'm like this. There's so many of us, we wear so many masks. It's time to remove your mask, sister. It's time to remove it. A feminine woman is herself constantly. You know, they say character is like a statue. It's like a statue. A statue, whether it rains, if there's a tornado, there's this, there's this, or that, it still it remains in that same position. That's what your character should be like. Indoors, you're like this. Outdoors, you're like this. In front of people, you're like this. Up, uh, out of, uh, behind people, you're like this. A feminine woman is truly herself. You know, the world wants to classify femininity as you dress this way, you wear dresses, you know, your hair is long, you put makeup on, your nails and this and stuff like that. That's looking feminine. That's not being feminine. Because we have, if that's the case, we have a lot of feminine people in Hollywood then, if that's the case. But think about it. There's so many feminine women in Hollywood yet, they're so loud. They dressed in like they're feminine, but they so loud. They so loud, so wild, so loose. The same thing like the story I narrated, a lot of people are marrying such women thinking that they're feminine, they're, that they're real women, bring them to their house, but it ha the marriage don't last long. It doesn't last long. Don't just look feminine, be feminine. I would strongly advise that you go to the Proverbs 31 woman, the teaching we did, go on that and learn those characteristics. But not only those characteristics, but realize also that in being vulnerable, in being a girly girl, brings favor. It's a balance. Don't just be so holy, 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 that people can't even relate to you, human, human, hum, humanly speaking. For those of us who are going to get married in the future, your husband does not, is not looking for, uh, for Sister Mary, 24, 7, 365. Be his girl. Those of us in relationship the same way, be his girl. How do you dress? Back to the presentation. How do you dress? Can people look at you and be like, that's a woman, that's a man? Hmm? Amen. The other thing about being a, fem a feminine woman is that you have a presence. You don't just exist. There's so many people, you will not even realize they were in the room with you until they open their mouths, until someone says, yeah, this and so person was there. Do you, is there a presence about you? A presence about you. That when you walk in a room, people know F.A. has arrived. Not because F.A. said, I'm here. Don't just exist. Have a presence. And for you to know your presence, for you to know, you know, be strong, back to you know, the confident being yourself, is knowing your identity. It's being you as well. have a presence ladies please i don't know what's coming out of my mouth like i said i didn't sit usually whenever i plan our meetings you know me and the lord we sit we talk and i write down everything that's going to be said but tonight i just i'm writing as it comes to my mind i just i'm saying it and i'm writing as it comes to my mind but one thing i want you to leave if you don't get anything from this room if you don't get anything from tonight one thing i want you to know is for you to be a girl be a girl you are not a man. Don't try to be like a man. You will never be like a man. Even if you go and do corrective surgery, corrective, what are you correcting? God didn't make a mistake. Even if you decide to do all of that, you will never be a man. 
those of those men trying to be women they will never be women go ahead and implant boobs nothing is going to come out go ahead and take a uh, uh some hormone pills you will hello if you want to change that you better go and, and remove everything god placed in you whatnot <sighs> If you don't get anything from today, so be a woman, be a girl. Being girly is not a form of weakness. Being a woman is not a form of weakness. People say you're too sensitive. Of course, you shouldn't be so sensitive. Everything rubs on you. You shouldn't be like that. But what I'm saying is that don't be so aggressive all the time. I got this. I got this. I got this. I only know men to tell me what to do. Yaddy, 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 yaddy. My dear, you will die by yourself. Be a girl. A feminine woman is also submissive. You are submissive. And the world has classified submission as a disease. Submission as a form of weakness. What turns the head? It is the neck. That is what submission is. When you submit, what you do is you, you get favor from people. You get respect from people. And you begin to make your request. Vashti, oh my God, I cannot wait for us to learn about Esther, for us to study that book. Vashti, Queen, Va Queen Vashti, if you turn to Esther, Lord Jesus, uh-uh. I'm trying not to go to, the, uh, to Esther studies. We're going to study about her. She's amazing. If you turn to Esther chapter 1, verse 11. So just to give you a little narrative, um, the king was having a little a celebration and he was, you know, drunk and all, whatnot. And all the pe people around him, of course, were drunk. And they was like, call, call Queen Vashti because she was so beautiful. They say, call her, let her come, let us see her. And that's one thing I want you to realize. Being feminine is not just about outwardness. It's also inside your values, your character. We will learn that as we start the book of Esther. But then he said, call, they told him to call and in verse 11, it says to bring Vashti, the queen before the king with the crown royal to show the people and the princess her beauty for she was fair to look on. You see what I'm talking about? She looked feminine. She was beautiful. She was fair. The word fair means beautiful. So not just about brightness. She was beautiful. Verse 12 says, but the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his chamber on Chamberlain's, therefore was the king very wroth and his anger burned in him. This was not a submissive wife. She looked feminine. She looks like a woman. The king said, come out. I wanna show everybody how gracious you are, how beautiful you are, how amazing you are, how, so how, how, how much of a woman you are. And she said, excuse me? You want me to come before these drunkards? Are you, are you, are you okay? So the king got so angry. Then the next thing that happens is that he says, you know what? I don't want her to be the queen anymore. Go ahead and call all virgins, 400 virgins. Come, let them do something, come. And what happened? In chapter two, we're gonna look at verse nine. This is after you know Esther has come in and Esther was just gracious person. I like to believe that gracious person and, and verse 9 says and the maiden pleased him talking about Esther pleased him and she obtained kindness of him so just to give you a background story the guy that was in charge of the maidens his name was hey guy he saw Esther and he was like, there's something about her remember when I was talking about presence there was something about her that just entices me there's something about her that makes me want to give her the very best that's what femininity does to you. It makes someone wants to give you the very best. Femininity grabs the heart of people. When you're feminine, when you're a woman, not trying to be a man. If you fight against man, you try to be man, they will, you will keep clashing. But when you become gentle, become submissive, you know how to talk to people, you will get your way. So in verse nine it says, and the maiden pleased him and she obtained kindness of him and he speedily gave her her things for purification. Quickly, he gave her everything he needed. Quickly, he gave her the best house. He gave her the best of everything. 
And then when time came for Esther to be presented to the king, he looked at her and he said, baby, what's up? That's what submission, that's what femininity does. It grants you unmerited favor. I will say this not because I'm like, it's something for us to just learn. I'm saying it from experience. I'm saying it from experience. I'm not always the girliest of girls and I'm, I'm working on that, but I've realized how I am when I behave like a woman, behave like a girl, versus when I say, hmm, who are you talking to? Hmm? You can't tell me nothing. I'm this, I'm, I'm, I'm bold, you know, I'm strong. Yeah, be all that. I'm so spiritual. Yeah, but that's not gonna get you nobody or get your way. The Bible says, let by, by, by your character, you will gain people. Femininity. Don't lose essence of your girliness. Be bold, be confident, be self-assured. Be all that you can, but as you're being, value femininity. It is not a weakness, my friend. It is not a weakness. You see little girls, do you see why they get away so quickly with their fathers? Because when he sees her, he sees someone that needs help. He sees someone that he wants to help. Daddy, can you please open this for me? And then although she, you know, he's like, you can open it, but still he goes and opens and say, here you are. She's able to, and look, don't be using it to get your way, okay? But she's able to get her way because the sweetness about her. A feminine woman is sweet. The world has kind of got an idea of it, but they're using it in a negative way. They're using it in a more seductive way. You see a woman dress some kind of how to kind of emphasize her shape, emphasize her, her whatever she may have, showing her cleavage, doing all of that. So it's using it in a more sensual, more seductive way, which we shouldn't. But they have learned something. And now we're wondering why are, why are husbands cheating? Why you have a beautiful woman at home, but you will still go and cheat? There is something that that woman, the other woman has that it's missing. There's a void missing in that man. His wife may be great, but she's missing something. So he goes after the feminine one. He goes after the feminine one. Be feminine. Sometimes you can do it, yes, but just relax. Let them do it. Let the man around you do it. Don't be bougie and rude. That's what I'm saying, okay? It's a balance. Sometimes you know how to open that jar, but let him do it. Daddy, can you do this? My brother, can you do this? If you're in a relationship, can you do this? Honey, your husband, can you do this? You will find out that you will get everything you want by simply being a woman. It's called the power of influence, the power of femininity.